Okay, are you the kind of person who likes fruity, fizzy, summery gin drinks? The perfect thing for hot weather? The kind of thing you might be drinking at your club on the poolside after having a round of tennis on a summer day? Well then, my friend, you would be in luck. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a variation on the classic Tom Collins, but this one is made with grapefruit, so it has the super original and imaginative name, the Grapefruit Collins. <laughs> Once again, we turn to the pages of Regarding Cocktails by Sasha Petrosky for today's recipe. And whatever the name of this cocktail lacks in originality, the idea of adding grapefruit to the classic Tom Collins is one of the best examples you'll find of a modern spin on a classic recipe. And it's not only a brilliant adaptation, it's also very easy to do. To build this cocktail, start with a shaker tin and combine 3 quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice, and next, pull a big grapefruit zest and reserve for the garnish as it's kind of hard to peel a cut grapefruit. Then squeeze and measure one ounce of fresh grapefruit juice, Measure two ounces of your preferred gin. Today I'm using Rainier Mountain Fresh Gin. Then add ice to your shaker, and today I decided to use the Petrosky ice method, namely to use a single large cube of ice, allow the ice to temper in the cocktail for a few seconds to prevent it from shattering, and then shake hard enough to eventually break the ice cube toward the end of the shaking process. Next, I'll carve a large ice block into a more manageable shape for a Collins glass, and then strain the cocktail over the ice. Top with soda water, trim and twist the grapefruit zest from earlier, add the zest and a straw to the cocktail, and that is the grapefruit Collins. All right, well, moment of truth. Time to give this thing a taste and find out, find out how good it is. Cheers. Oh, that's very nice. So the first thing you taste is the juniper and the gin, and then it's very quickly followed by lemon and grapefruit, and it's just the right sweetness level to make those flavors pop and blend without fighting with each other. It's really refreshing, it's really tasty. Obviously, this is only like one step away from a Tom Collins, so, you know, if you're familiar with that drink, then this would probably fit right into your expectations for a drink like this. This gin that I used is made by the Rainier Beer Company, and it says that it's made with juniper, of course, but also with huckleberry and spruce. And I can really taste the spruce in there. It's a very savory kind of flavor. It's kind of behaving the same way that rosemary would if you were to use a rosemary garnish on a gin sour or something like that. So it's it's like a herbal savory note. It's, it's really, really nice. I think for me, something like aviation or just a Bombay London dry gin, something kind of mild and not very noticeable would kind of get lost in this drink pretty easily because the grapefruit and lemon are are really coming to the party with, with a lot of weight behind them. So you could easily customize the the flavor of this drink to your personal preference, just don't use something super mild. That That's my recommendation. Use something that has a lot of flavor to it, otherwise it's just going to get lost in the mixture. The more I'm tasting this, one of the cool things about grapefruit is also coming out the bitterness, you know. Bitterness goes really well with gin. That's why things like a gin and tonic work really well, or a Negroni, because gin, in general, has the ability to handle bitterness and actually benefit from having that alongside of its own flavor. If you like the video, hit the button. If you didn't like the video, hit the other button and let me know why down below. My name is Luke. This has been the Homemade Edition, and I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers. <laughs>